Hi, hello. I'm going to show you about how to do backup and restore using Longhorn uh, provision, uh, volume provision manager. So as you can see here, Longhorn now has reached version 1.0. So I hope it, it becomes much more stable now. And I'm excited to test how the backup and restore now performs. So to do that, we are going to use uh, some application and do some uh, provision some volume for data persistence, and then we do backup, then we simulate a restore. And I have here, uh, I have installed two apps in my Rancher. It's, it's on a cluster. And the first apps is PostGIS database. The other apps is just a PG admin. The PG admin is used to, to see the inside of the PostGIS database. As you can see here, I already set up the, uh, the database so that I can read it from inside PG admin. I have a database called GIS with a table called uh, test. And I have, let me see, I have two rows of data. And what we are going to do now is to do some backup using Longhorn and put it somewhere and then we do restore. So I have to explain it first now. Well, let me just check if the query works. So the query works and we only have two rows here and now we want to do backup. So uh, I have to explain first that the PostGIS database that I use now currently use volume provisioned by Kubernetes in my cluster. And I set the Longhorn uh, as, as the default storage class for my persistent volume claim. So when, when the Helm charts or, or Ranger charts try to provision new volumes, Longhorn will, will provide the volumes. And at the moment, it, we can see the, the volume from Longhorn interface. As you can see here, there are two volumes. The first one is used by PostGIS. It, it is bound to, um, to the PostgreSQL data directory, and the other one is used by PG admin. So we, we wanted to back up this volume. If you click on the PVC name, you can see some details about the volume. For example, in the right panel here, there is a replicas. So normally Longhorn by default will try to use three replicas at minimum. But since at the moment I only use one node for, for the worker node, uh, we only have one, one volume in one node. So there are only one replicas and in the left side, there are some details about the volume itself. For example, as you can see here, the size of the volume is eight gigabyte, but the actual size is 1.27 gigabyte. And at the bottom here, we can see the snapshot panel. There are two buttons here, take snapshot and create backup. The difference about them is, um, well, for snapshot, we we create a backup, but it's going to say with uh, it's going to stay within the cluster. So if if I make a snapshot, then yeah, you can think of it like making a backup, but the data stays within your cluster. 
but for create backup command we are making a backup and stores it off the cluster so uh, in another service not in your cluster so let's let's say that we're going to make a snapshot now if you click on the volume head at the moment you can see that the size of the volume is 2.73 megabyte it's different with with what is reported here so I, I don't know why it's different but I think maybe because the, this is just a volume so uh, it might be just a block volume so there are some compression or something happening at the background but we're going to make a snapshot or you can click it from this button here and as you can see a snapshot is created here and if you make another snapshot because we haven't changed the the data in the volume i haven't made any changes into the database if you make a snapshot then the the next snapshot have an actual size of one byte because uh, it it actually saves the difference, not the whole, not the whole block. So I think that's what nice with uh, with Longhorn. So we are going to make a backup. You can make a backup from here or here. Let's say we are going to make a backup from here. You can add a label. Uh, let's say it's called project name. Maybe you can add a timestamp or something there. And as you can see, Longhorn gave us a progress bar. So we can know the progress of the backup created. And I need to explain that uh, you can set up in, in the setting, in the general setting, you can set up your backup target, which is which is an of the cluster service. So Longhorn can can send backup into an S3 compatible service. But at the moment I'm using Minio because Minio is S3 compatible service. And you can set the credentials here. It's fairly straightforward. You just need to consult the documentation. So when I click create backup, the backup is sent into our menu uh, browser, to our menu service. Sorry. So this is this is the backup that that we created. If you wanted to see what's happening, maybe we can just delete. Uh, no, let's let's just let's just redo. If you wanted to see if that's really picked up or not, let's just delete the backup and then do it again. So this is the only content of the bucket. As you can see here, a new a new path is created in the bucket. And if you go into the backup tab, you can see the newly created backup here. This is the, the PVC list, the volume list. If you click it, there will be several lists that is corresponding to the snapshot that we backed up of the cluster into our mini service.
Yeah. So we just made our backup and now we wanted to simulate a restore. So let's say your database is destroyed or uh, maybe you delete some tables or some data and then you wanted to refer to the previous snapshot. So we are going to do that and we're going to simulate that. So let's go back to the PG admin and then let's say we deleted the whole table. We deleted the whole table, we just dropped it and then refresh. And as you can see, the, the table is no more. And then we are going to do restore. But before we are going to the restore, I'm going to show you this list here. If you are going to restore, make sure you, you detach the volume first or restore it into a different volume. But at the moment, we are just going to try to restore into the same volume because we only have one replicas and one node. So we need to detach the volumes from the workloads. Uh, otherwise, Kubernetes won't let you uh, delete the volume. So we are going to we are going to decrease the workloads like this. We only have one workloads now, and the workloads is accessing the volume. So in order for the volume to be free, we need to delete these workloads. We do it by downscaling the, the pods here. So we downscale and we let the pods be deleted. Maybe it takes a couple of seconds because the process needs to, to exit cleanly from its postgis. Uh, process from Postgres process. You can see the state here from the event in the in the pod page here. Yeah, and then the, the pod is no more, the scale is down. So that means the the volume is free. As you can see now, the the uh, the volume is still bound to the sorry the claim is still bound to the persistent volume, and we are not going to delete this because we wanted to use the same volume ID or volume name. So instead of deleting this volume, we are going to uh, in, sorry instead of deleting the claim we're going to delete the volume because we wanted to have the volume is the same and used by the same workloads and the same claim. So we are going to delete the volume. As you can see, the volume is already detached. We are just going to delete it using this button or this button here. It's the same. And after we delete that, we do restore, or maybe we just check first if the, the table is accessible or not. Well, obviously this will time out because the workloads is died. So we are going to restore by using the, from the backup tab, Okay, I have some problem here because the linear surface is not accessible. But never mind that because because we still have the uh, the backup here. Let's just try it. So we select the backup list and then we do restore. 
since we only have one snapshot, we can just restore from the latest backup. If you wanted to restore from different snapshot, you can go to the snapshot page and then click restore. Otherwise, let's just use the restore list latest backup. Okay. So we restored the same volume. The volume name is the same. And as you can see here, it's not healthy because the block is going to be rebuilt. And Longhorn gave you some progress bar. So we are going to wait for now. After that, we attach it into the, into the node. So we attach it. We only have one node for now, so just choose the node, then click OK. And it's healthy, so we go back into the workloads table, and then we increase the scale, and we wait for postgis to boot up, and after that, we're going to check back from ggadmin. So we're going to, oh, okay, that was fast. So let's check into the PG admin and let's do, yeah, yeah, the previous connection was disconnected. So <clears throat> we need to reconnect. And let's refresh the, refresh the table. And as you can see here, we have a table and we do the query to check if the content is there and the content is there. So we have our records back, our table back. So that's how you do backup and restore using Longhorn Volume Manager. And I have to uh, tell you something about this first, about the the way we do our backup is actually not recommended at the moment, the way that I showed you, because, because PostGIS is an active service, then uh, what we did just before is we, we make a snapshot from the current active directory, which is the PostgreSQL uh, data directory, and Supposedly, we need to make the database dump first, and then what we back up is we back up the database dump instead of the instead of the PostgreSQL data directory. Because let's say you're you have a busy uh, database and some clients are writing into the database, then your database might be locked, and when the database is locked, your your backup is saving the log. And then when you restore, the log is currently working, but the process already forgot that uh, the, the database is currently locked. So you have a dead log database. So the recommended way I think is to, to make the snapshot or backup from the database dump instead of directly from the PostgreSQL data directory. So I think that's all, and uh, I think it's quite feasible to use Longhorn. The user interface is good and intuitive. Uh, it's, it's easy enough to perform backup and restore just by doing some clicks. You can even add replicas if you had more nodes. Yeah, I think. I think 